Bob Whitaker and his special report number three. Tomorrow, the North East's very own warship, HMS Newcastle, sails south from northern Shetland at the end of a major 10-day NATO exercise. The Tysonville destroyer has been testing weapons under battle conditions alongside 30 ships and submarines and 100 aircraft. Well, as I said, Bob Whitaker and our cameraman, Simon Longbottom, were winched aboard to join the 280 crew. A dozen of them were from our region. On deck for the big attack. But the enemy this time isn't hovering out there on the high seas. It's on board. The fight is against fat. The mission to get fit. Many of the crew were attached to HMS Newcastle for two, maybe three years. And often they're on the ship for up to a month at a time before they go ashore. So it's important for morale that it's not a case of all work and no play. Down below, there isn't much room to do much more than sit or sleep. So much of Newcastle is given over to war hardware, the lads instead have to work out on top around the spot where the helicopter lands and takes off. After being cooped up on duty for six hours without a break, it's a chance to let off steam and lose some sweat. But it's also a way of building up team spirit and friendships, so vital in the Navy. Uh, it is. I think it's very important, really, on the ship, just where you've got more friends. You, you get like to really go, really, on board. I mean, there's, there's, in this mess, there's 54 people in here, and if you don't get on with everyone, I mean, it's, it, could, it could be quite frightening, really, like, of everyone not getting on together. There is an active social life on board Newcastle, but most of that unfolds when the ship returns along the time. The crew entertain thousands of visitors from the northeast, and in turn they enjoy treats from organizations and local authorities. But the lads are encouraged to enjoy pastimes out on the world's oceans. That's where we can start. We start in a band up on the ship. We just use the field and continue working on. Have you actually performed yet? No, not yet. When we get alongside these um, activities that are being arranged off the ship, we build up the social side of things as well as our work of the effectiveness on board. So how on earth can you practice with a band on a ship? Well, just get together in the engineering workshop, and there's two lads on the keyboard, a couple of us on the guitar, doing so. Are you any good? <laughs> of course, food can be entertaining, and even during the height of war games, it's still action stations in the galley. Every month, they get through half a mile of sausages, five tons of spuds, 620 gallons of milk. Not much good for the waistline, but just a job for morale. A lot of them are closed up in certain sections of the ship, purely on watch without a lot of manual work to do. So what they do is look forward to the meal time. Uh, so we try and enlighten them and get them cheer across the counter when they come through. If they're still feeling peckish, there's always the corner shop. It's run by civilians from the NAFI organization. And this may be the smallest bank in the world, and it's not open much. But the captain believes, even in cramped conditions, every little facility is worthwhile, if it helps keep the spirits up. We're all pulling together, we've all got a job to do, and the great thing is that whatever we do, we've got a reputation for doing it enthusiastically and cheerfully. We always get a smile. We always get a smile. <laughs> Even during the height of battle, the crew take time out to lift their spirits in other ways. It's been a tough ten days during the NATO exercise, but this coming weekend they'll pull into dock for a welcome break. Then in two months, HMS Newcastle is heading for a secret ocean destination, which has seen its share of real war in recent years. And no doubt, the hearts of the North East will be with them. And that was Bob's final report into the activities on HMS Newcastle. And that's it for part one.